Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X research and professional physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one is entitled Planet X and the Moon. The moon has not always been in the sky. Now, it is widely believed that the moon has been with the Earth for millions of years. However, the Planet X system, which could also be called the destroyer system, of the Earth's stars and planets has been entering and affecting the solar system and our planet for thousands of years. And you may look at Article 367 entitled Planet X coming in as comets and affecting the Earth. These objects are depleted in energy and have a low gravitational influence and are also not able to create matter as living cores of stars and planets are. And you may look at Article 522 entitled Stellar Cores or Sources of Matter or White Holes. And here you can see one of these objects in the Sun's corona. And you can see one here in the Earth's atmosphere. And you can see that it's partially or almost completely immersed in cloud, but you can still see that it's a dark spherical object. And the fact that they are always immersed in clouds um, is what makes it so difficult for them being observed. Because all we see is basically a cloud. Now, uh, Planet X systems, still, of course, because they are depleted in gravitational energy, cannot create matter. This is because matter creation arises as a result of light or photons being transformed into matter. And you may look at Article 190 entitled The God Particle Turning Light into Matter or Book 3 entitled Planet X Reveals Gravity and Light. Now, so energy conservation is not violated. But even though they can no longer be a source of matter, Planet X objects will still retain a strong positive electric field. And by closely approaching a living celestial object with a living core, they are able to induce it into having matter creation events or into transforming some of their gravitational photon energy into matter. This is what causes the Sun to have a CME. And for planets with rocky surfaces like the Earth, it results in volcanic eruptions, as the matter created is in the form of positively charged liquid plasma, in other words, magma. Earthquakes are also the result of matter creation events, but in this case the magma was not able to reach the surface of the planet. And you may look at Article 501 entitled Planet X Induced Volcanic Eruptions, or like an Earth CME. And this is illustrated here how if you have a living celestial object with a living core and the living core generates a gravitational field and a strong positive electric field which is represented by the red arrows. And this field would go up or close to the surface because the surface is neutral and then the atmosphere is negatively charged. Now the stellar core does not have any outer layers. Uh, that's now a debris field. So it's just a stellar core. It still retains a strong positive electric field. But it... Um, it has lost its energy, so it has no gravitational energy or light inside and so cannot create matter. But by causing its electric field to overlap the electric field of a living core, as you can see the electric field is now reaching all the way to the core, it intensifies the field of this core at the surface of the core, which induces it into a matter creation event. And this causes magma to be created, matter in a form of magma, and it explodes outwards towards the surface, and it causes a volcanic eruption on a planet with rocky layers. It will create volcanoes on it if there were no volcanoes on it before, because the magma will tend to break the rocky layers to find its way all the way to the surface, thus creating volcanoes. On a star, there's no need for that because a star that is uh, still managing to emit light, our sun seems to have lost that ability, so it's turning into a planet now. But in a star, this uh, layer, which would be the chromospheric layer for a star, but it's basically the same as magma.
uh, will go all the way to the surface. So with the core in uh, a star, when it goes through a matter creation event, it creates again this positively uh, ion plasma and it causes an eruption from there, but then it pushes the upper magma outwards and it gets pushed out into the corona, into space, creates a CME. Now, the planet X system has been affecting the solar system at least since the Great Flood, which seems to have occurred between 4,000 and 5,000 years uh, ago, and is now affecting the solar system in an unprecedented way, with the number of objects having reached the Sun in the last perhaps 50 years being unprecedented, as large numbers of these objects have been observed in the Sun's corona, and the amount of debris dust entering the Earth's atmosphere having also reached unprecedented levels. In addition, the numbers of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions have greatly increased, and these can only be happening if a Planet X stellar core of a size close to or larger than Earth's core is entering the Earth's atmosphere and provoking the Earth's core into matter creation events. This seems to be what occurred at the time of the Great Flood, which also caused the Earth's surface to have become littered with volcanoes. And you may look at Article 515 entitled Current Cataclysm Engulfing the Earth Started at the Great Flood. The effects, however, continued over the next thousands of years as the Earth continued to have volcanic eruptions such as the Krakatoa volcanic eruption in 1883, indicating that these objects continue to arrive and approach the Earth. Mars seems to have been affected as well, as it too has volcanoes on its surface, a sign that its core was provoked into matter creation events by at least one Planet X object. Now, we would think with the Earth being approached over thousands of years by Planet X system stellar cores that its Moon would have been affected as well, in which case there should be volcanoes on the Moon. However, there are no volcanoes on the Moon whatsoever. There is evidence of lava flowing on its surface, which is what has given rise to the features called mares. But these are not volcanoes. There are no volcanoes associated with these features. This therefore indicates that the lava which flowed across the surface of the Moon did not come from the Moon's interior, and that therefore the Moon does not have a living core. So where would the Moon's lava have come from then? Well, in Article 501 entitled Planet X Induced Volcanic Eruptions, or like an Earth CME, lava can be seen issuing from the Popo volcano in Mexico and flowing across a surface above it. You see a photograph of that here. It's a screenshot from a video. And this shows that lava attached and flowed across the surface of a Planet X system stellar core positioned right above the volcano. Now, and this basically illustrates what occurs whenever there's a volcanic eruption. And as I said, it's induced by the, pos the strong positive electric field of the Planet X system stellar core, uh, affecting the Earth's core and inducing it into a matter creation event. And that causes lava to erupt away from the core and it pushes lava, which may be closer to the surface, upwards towards the stellar core. And then the stellar core, if it has uh, a gravitational potential comparable to uh, this magma, it will uh, it will cause it to attach itself. It will attach to the stellar core, and the stellar core will then gain an outer layer made up of magma, which comes from inside the Earth. This means that the lava flows on the Moon came from volcanic eruptions on the Earth, and the Moon must have been inside the Earth's atmosphere at the time, and that therefore the Moon was once a Planet X system stellar core. Once it had gained a layer of material on its surface, it was no longer able to closely approach the Earth, and must have then settled in the orbit it is in now. It is likely that the layer of material above the dead core is thin, which means that the Moon, which is 
one sixth the size of the Earth is almost entirely core, and that this core is therefore a little larger than Earth's core, which is one fifth of the size of the Earth. This core would have low gravitational influence as it is dead, but a strong electric field which would be able to provoke the Earth into stronger matter creation events if such a core were to come as close as to enter the Earth's atmosphere as these objects clearly do. The Moon could therefore be the planet system stellar core that caused the Great Flood and settled into orbit around the Earth soon after the event. Many would argue that God created the moon when he created the earth, as that is what it states in Genesis. However, the evidence in this case does not agree with the statement in Genesis, which seems to imply that the moon was placed in orbit around the earth then. So it is possible that the translators of the Bible were so convinced that the moon had always been there that they translated the Bible as they did, without it being what was intended in the first place. There is also historical evidence of humans being on earth at a time when there was no moon in the sky. Emmanuel Velikovsky found evidence in Greek writings of a recorded time in history when there was no moon in the sky. The Greek philosopher Aristotle, for example, mentions that Arcadia in Greece at a time before it was inhabited by the Hellenes was inhabited by a people called Proselenes when there was no moon in the sky. Plutarch, another Greek philosopher, wrote about the Orcadians as being pre-lunar people. So in conclusion, the moon appears to have a dead core and is therefore a planet X system stellar core, which must have once entered the Earth's atmosphere, provoked the Earth into matter creation events, absorbed lava issuing out of Earth volcanoes, and eventually settled in a regular orbit around the Earth. This seems to have occurred during a time when human beings already inhabited the Earth. This and the fact that the Moon as a core would be a little larger than Earth's core makes it likely that it was the actual planet X object which caused the Great Flood. And these are the references. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X physicist. Thank you for watching.